I'm Zulina Maxwell, and we begin tonight with the way the government is supposed to work. On November 9th, 2016, one day after the election, a woman named Denise Turner Roth signed the official document that triggered the first steps in the transition of power. Ms. Roth was the head of a little known government agency called the General Services Administration. And once she signed that document, she started the process of turning over millions of dollars for salaries, office space, and equipment to the incoming administration. All of that happened one day after the election, quickly, as it should, so the new team can get right to work. But now, four whole days after Joe Biden was declared the winner of the election, that letter still has not been signed. The current head of the GSA, a Trump appointee named Emily Murphy, still has not given Biden the go-ahead. And that is not just annoying, it's potentially dangerous. T transition officials tell the New York Times her inaction is denying the Biden team access to secure facilities where they can discuss classified information. It also means his advisors can't meet with their counterparts or begin background checks on top cabinet nominees that require top secret access. The president-elect himself can't receive the intelligence briefings he should be getting until Emily Murphy signs that document. In a statement, the GSA said Murphy still hasn't determined that a, quote, winner is clear. But a winner is clear. And his team, Joe Biden's team, needs to get to work. Starting us off tonight is Denise Turner Roth. She served as the administrator of the General Services Administration under the Obama administration from 2015 until Donald Trump's inauguration in 2017. Explain for us um, and our viewers at home who are like, what is the General Services Administration? I have never heard of that before. Um, what this process was like back in 2016. What information did you rely upon when, you, when it was your time to sign this letter and hand the keys over to the incoming Trump administration? Like, how is this supposed to work? So the General Services Administration is responsible for the operations of government um, and managing things from buildings to uh, office um, procurement um, and activity across the board. Um, and so in 2016, there were a number of things that happened that evening. I knew that I had the responsibility in terms of looking at the outcome of the election and taking a reasonable uh, input of information, which included news outlet reporting, which included the reporting from the states uh, that would generally give direction of, yes, we have reached a winner and it is time for the ascertainment to occur. Um, overnight as well, concession did uh, was signaled by the Clinton administration. So that certainly was a factor as well. Uh, but there are a number of things that uh, you can take into account, but ultimately it says that the general service administrator will determine uh, the apparent winner and then move forward with these activities. So do you wait for, you don't wait for the electors. This happened the day after the election in 2016. So we're talking about President Trump essentially getting uh, the funding that this letter authorizes uh, the day after the election. It, it wasn't when the electors were certified. Did you wait for a concession or was it all of those things uh, combined that led you to, to say it's time to, to do the letter? It's all of those items combined, and it wouldn't have had to be the case that there was a concession in order to move forward. Uh, it, it would have been all of the elements combined in terms of the performance of the state, what the states were reporting, what major news outlets were reporting, and what a reasonable assessment of the circumstances were. Yeah, and my understanding is that the law makes clear that this process should be done based on those things that you laid out, um, the election reporting, the news reporting, uh, a concession speech. Why do you think it is that we are in this moment um, where it seems to be politically motivated that Emily Murphy, a political appointee, is refusing um, to, do, to, to uh, sign the letter and authorize the funding? Is, it, does, do you see it as political? I, I can't speak to what's happening in terms of the administration at this point and to GSA in particular. Obviously, I'm sure that she's hearing from a number of advisors and senior council members uh, who are giving her direction. Um, at the end of the day, in terms of the transition itself, though, I can say for sure that it's a very important process um, that has a true implication on how the government transition. And the goal is for there to be a smooth transition.
Yeah, it seems like the peaceful transition and the fact that even something as small as a memo authorizing funding so that people um, can get to work and staff up, you know, that, that has national security implications, obviously. And also just they won't be able to get right on to the COVID planning. Um, if Emily Murphy was listening to this interview right now, just say she was uh, download, she downloaded Peacock uh, to watch Zerlina, um, what would you tell her? What advice would you give her in terms of um, her decision-making process in this moment as the election is over, um, essentially for the president, there are still votes being counted, um, but the margins are larger than they were in 2016. So I, I disagree with her that the, the result is quote unquote unclear. What would your advice be to her in this moment? I'm sure she's getting a ton of advice at this point. Um, what I would be focused on though, if, if I'm in her position is what can allow for this transition to take place. There is over 100 agencies within the federal government, 4 million people, a lot of moving pieces. And so if you think about the fact that the Biden administration is going to need to lead those efforts, their ability to understand as quickly as possible what's happening in the uh, impact of the policy decisions and the concepts that are on the table and being able to move the government forward is very essential. Um, and it is my sincere hope that they can come through this as quickly as possible and that she can sign those documents. And, and like you point out, there is security, national security concerns at risk, as well as the health and well-being of the country. We're in a unique time at this moment. Um, and we are hopeful that we are going to have a vaccine. The idea of being able to get those logistics planning started to get the work moving for the Biden administration to be able to quick pick up as quickly as possible. All those things are impacted by the transition being slowed down. And that's in terms of being able to move quick, move forward as quickly as possible, very essential. I understand that you, you can't know what is in Emily Murphy's mind um, in this moment and whether she's being motivated by politics and partisan um, goals, but even still, even if she's not, what's the danger uh, associated with um, letting this linger on for days and days and not getting Joe Biden the funding that he needs to have um, a productive transition? Um, and also in terms of the, the security implications you referenced. Well, Zelina, in what I focus on the most, I know that there there's a lot of uh, office space and money that is at, at, at um, account and opportunity here, but it's really the access to the senior leadership that's running these agencies. Uh, Joe Biden's team that he's been putting together and announcing certainly are senior experienced people who have been in government before and their learning curve may be shorter, but there has been a lot that's happened in government, especially in the last four years. Um, and especially right now, we're at a sensitive time as, as a country and the ability for the president-elect to step in, to take over quickly um, is very crucial. Uh, there were, and I know there's been a lot of discussion over the last few days about the 9-11 commission report that pointed to the idea that the uh, delays in transition was a factor in the president's office and administration being prepared to take over um, and being prepared to respond to a 9-11 event. Um, you don't want situations in which the president is not prepared. I appreciate the work that's happening now uh, by the Biden transition team, but we need to move forward this process as quickly as possible. We don't want this process to be hindered. What is What are the um, solutions possibly um, if she doesn't sign the letter? I mean, is this all hinging on Emily Murphy signing this letter? And what happens if she does not do that? Well, I imagine that there's a, there's a number of steps that are coming up that I'm sure this administration and the GSA is watching for in terms of the vote count certification. Uh, in January, there will be uh, actions by Congress that need to be taken as well. So there's a number of steps to come up uh, to come over uh, to overcome rather in the next few weeks and days. Uh, but obviously, um, it, as fast as they can move, the better in terms of what the implications are. It's the delay in the president-elect being able to take over and lead Congress, lead the government forward. You don't want to delay in that, and especially considering the time that we're in at this time in the in the country. Yeah, especially during COVID-19, to your point, it seems like you'd want the incoming administration to be able uh, to implement a national plan on COVID-19 
immediately. You don't want to delay on that. It, last question in the last minute here. Is there a law on the books? You know, often people will say, well, this is against a norm or this is, you know, not the way things are done. Is there a law on the books that she is violating in not signing this letter um, now that the election results are certain? Well, at this point, it, I think one of the things it leads us to is, is it time for us to take another look at the Presidential Transition Act, in particular in the space of what are the threshold points that the administrator should consider when making the determination. There is a lot of, of ambiguity or unspoken concepts in the in the law, and it brings us to this point here where we are questioning, have we reached a moment where ascertainment can be achieved? Um, and, and there's a lot of debate on either side. What I can say for sure is that the delays are certainly an impact to the government uh, being able to transition smoothly, and that's what we need to have happen. I didn't even know there was a presidential transition act. So you learn things every day um, because Donald Trump, I guess, reveals so many things we did not know about our government. Um, but it's helpful to know. Denise Turner Roth, thank you so much for joining us tonight. NBC News has learned that President Trump met today with top advisors to discuss the path forward.